Hello, I'm Jason McCoy, your human sexuality professor. I don't lecture for the camera very often, but when I do, I like to make it count. Uh, today I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss something you probably already know a little something about. However, in the spirit of academic analysis, I'm going to provide a little more context than maybe you're used to. I'm going to try to discuss sex ratio inequality from a few perspectives. You'll hear some economic theory, evolutionary theory, and maybe some other theoretical perspectives. The topic, um, again, that I'd like to discuss is sex ratio, sometimes referred to as gender ratio, um, particularly the inequality side of it. You know this concept as, quote, having more males in a population than females in a population, or having more females in a population than males. Uh, think about China. Uh, policies in that country for centuries has encouraged the sex ratio of males to far outnumber the sex ratio of females. Now remember that under normal circumstances, take here in the United States for example, when nothing is going on, uh, no particular governmental policies, uh, no preferences for um, one sex over the other by parents or communities, you can expect about 105 or 106 uh, live male births to 100 live female births. Uh, this is known as Mother Nature's base rate for sex ratio. You may be wondering why this is. Well, you can think about the 106 or 5 to 100 sex ratio as nature's way of correcting for male mortality. You see, male, males almost at every age are more likely to die than females. So that by the time you reach sexual maturity, um, the 105 males you've begun with are now down to around, uh, about 100 males for every 100 females. So beyond the fact that slightly more males than females are born under natural circumstances, you might be wondering what are some of the things that might exaggerate sex ratio asymmetries throughout life? In other words, what are some of the things that might cause there to be more men um, or more women throughout life in any given population. Uh, consider cultural preferences, as I mentioned earlier, for one sex or another. Uh, consider um, economic opportunities, more for one sex over the other. Casualties of war might disproportionately affect one sex more than another. Crime and subsequent imprisonment might affect the sexes unequally. And finally, but certainly not um, least, religious doctrines and edicts might favor one sex more than another. And when sex ratio asymmetry becomes extreme, um, serious consequences can and do arise. Consider China, for example. By 2020, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences estimates there will be 40 million more males under the age of 20 than there are females throughout the country. One of the consequences um, of this is suicide. Already, about 500 females kill themselves every day in China. Human trafficking and sex slavery are also on the rise in China. Certainly China's one-child policy combined with a cultural preference for males created and continues to exacerbate many of the social problems that I just mentioned, including many, many more. But I'd also like you to think about other cases of sex ratio inequality. Consider subcultures right here at home. Quoting from their book, Marriage Markets, Carbone and Kahn write, quote, In 2000, there were 46 employed African-American men for every 100 African-American females. And one in nine African-American men between the ages of 20 and 34 are behind bars, yes, incarcerated at any given time. Without the support financially and emotionally, African-American moms and subsequently their children can suffer needlessly. The exact reasons, of course, for why African-American men have such extreme unemployment and extreme incarceration rates compared to, say, whites and or Hispanics is a discussion for another, another time uh, and or perhaps another class. The fact still remains that due to more African-American females of mating age than there are African-American males, all sorts of problems can and do arise. And, of course, these problems are not exclusive to one race or ethnic group. 
Let's turn to North Dakota. According to Bloomberg, North Dakota has an extremely high sex ratio inequality, 148 to 100 to be exact. That is 148 male, males for every 100 females between the ages of 25 and 33. In contrast, the District of Columbia, D.C., has an estimated 87 to 100 sex ratio. This means there are only 87 men for every 100 women between the ages of 25 and 33. Can you guess some of the consequences of these extreme sex ratio inequalities? Just think about it for a minute. If 100 men between the ages of 25 and 33 pair up with 100 women, in North Dakota at least, there will be 48 men left without a mate. Put another way, the mating market is stacked against some in North Dakota, namely men. It is flooded with them. There are significantly more men than women. You might imagine that this puts more pressure on men to compete for women. In addition to North Dakota, Montana, Alaska, and South Dakota have similarly skewed male to female sex ratios at 131 to 100, 130 to 100, and 129 to 100 respectively. Interestingly, but not surprisingly, HIV rates are among the very lowest in these states. According to the Centers for Disease Control, only 15 people in North Dakota were diagnosed with HIV in 2011. Can you think of why this might be? Female control. Females in these states, due to inordinate pressure on the men, can demand that their partners use condoms, stay monogamous, and likewise commit to them. Men who fail to comply would necessarily find it quite difficult obtaining another mate. Remember, there, are just, there just aren't many women to go around. Women can be very selective under these circumstances. They can demand higher quality mates in places like North Dakota, South Dakota, Alaska, and Montana. Now consider places like the District of Columbia again. Remember, it has 87 men for every 100 women between the ages of 25 and 33. In the District of Columbia, women outnumber men. Can you predict any of the consequences? What do you think the HIV rate is in the District of Columbia compared to North Dakota? The District of Columbia has one of the highest HIV rates in the United States. In 2011, the Centers for Disease Control confirmed that nearly 1,000 new cases of HIV were in the District of Columbia. The overall population of North Dakota and the District of Columbia is almost identical, but you are 60 times more likely to become infected with HIV in the District of Columbia than in North Dakota. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk about sex ratios and sex ratio inequalities, and I hope this helps you with um, at least one of your assignments this week. Thank you.